Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Mahindra Scorpio N Z8 Select variant. Yes, that's a new variant of the Scorpio N. The Scorpio N is already available in a ton of variants, and this new variant takes the variant lineup to 34 freaking variants. That's a lot of variants, creating a lot of confusion. However, this is the more attractively priced variant of the Z8 variant because it's called Select, so they have selectively removed features from the Z8. This one is priced at Rs 23.08 lakhs which is very good pricing because this car is Rs 2.17 lakhs cheaper than the Z8 variant. Yeah, the Z8 Select is just amazing value for money. What they have done, they have actually removed around 8 features. One of them is optional. Yeah, the 4-wheel drive system is not available in the Z8 Select. But before we start, let me ask you a question. Do you want a cocktail like chill fragrance in your car? Then this Involve 1 Mojito Lemon is the one for you. It's super refreshing. It is super easy to regulate. Yeah, it's that easy to regulate. It does not leak at all and it actually makes me feel like I'm sitting on a beach having a cool drink. It is that amazing. You can get yours with a 10% discount using coupon code FASBEAM. Now let's quickly look at the features which they have removed from the car. First and foremost, they have actually removed automatic headlights, which is fine because I can turn on the headlights on my own, so not a biggie. They have removed the rain sensor from there, which means that it does not have automatic wipers either, which is fine since monsoon is there for only 3 or 4 months. I can manage with that as well. Power folding mirrors have been removed, which again is fine because I keep my mirrors open all the time. However, when you step inside, there are certain features which are a big miss, like push button start has gone. So you have to actually twist the key, which will burn around 13 calories, which is a biggie. Meanwhile, they've also removed the tire pressure monitoring system from here, which means that you have to get your tires checked occasionally. That's a feature I've used repeatedly in the Scorpio N and it has been very useful as well. So if you want that feature, just pay 2.17 lakhs more. They've removed dual zone climate control air conditioning system as well. So yes, you have to operate the fan with 1, 2, 3, 4, which is fine by me because I like it this way. And a feature nobody talks about, which has been removed as well, is anti-pinch for the co-driver's side. Why would Mahindra remove such a small feature? What will they say? 50 bucks? Probably yes. Anyways, this car perfume slots right here and instantly refreshes the whole cabin with a very nice smell. But before that, let me tell you that the Z8L variant, which is the top variant of the Scorpio N, has a lot more features. I think it has around 9 more features. Firstly, it has the Sony 3D surround sound system, 12 speaker system, which is amazing. It also has a drowsiness detection system, which is also nice. It gets a wireless charging pad, but only for the 4-wheel drive variant. That's kind of weird by 4-wheel drive people want to have wireless charging pad. Why do 2-wheel drive people not get that feature? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Let's open the hood. Let me turn on the lights as well, turn on the indicators and all. It gets a 6-way power adjust for the driver's seat, the Z8L. It also gets keyless entry, which is only there in the Z8L. In fact, the Z8L also gets the 6-seater option, which is not there on other variants. I don't know, maybe people who are opting for the top variant have less people to entertain. 18-inch wheels are there on the Z8L, which is not the case with the lower variants. Yeah, that 18-inch wheels look quite nice. This particular model, automatic, this one is the automatic. It is getting diamond cut alloy wheels, which is not there with the Z8, regular Z8 automatic. You get it only on the four-wheel drive or something of that sort. That's kind of weird. Front parking camera here is again there on the Z8L. It gets front parking sensors as well. So paying a little bit more, I think 4 lakhs something more than this car for the Z8L makes perfect sense if you are the kind who wants all the features in the world. Now let's straight away open the engine bay and oh my god, this is heavy. I still don't understand why it does not get gas struts, which the old Scorpio rather, the Scorpio Classic gets. There is this thing, insulation there. That is the diesel engine. There's some amount of vibration which you can feel. It is loud. So you can straight away skip this video, turn it off, tata bye bye because now I'm just going to give you a quick recap of the Scorpio N. Nothing new on this front, car looks quite nice, it gets all LED lights, it gets this nice Scorpio Sting DRL, that is the fog lamp and yeah, it's a smart looking car, I really like it but I don't understand why they haven't given it ADAS yet, although I hate ADAS but I think 
that's a feature which would really help them boost the sales of the car. In terms of length, this car is around 4.7 meters, under 4.7 meters in terms of length. Wheelbase is under 2.8 meters and for a car of this price, definitely it needs keyless entry. These alloy wheels look nice. I prefer this tire size because 245, 65, 17, higher sidewall, better ride quality of course. And when I get to the rear, I realize they have this Scorpio sting here as well. So a lot of attention to detail here and there. This is functional, the roof rails. I don't like the design of the rear. It simply hasn't grown on me only. I don't like it so much, I don't like it so much, I don't like it End of story. Gets dynamic swipe indicators, which is cool. And these vertical lights, not my taste, honestly. It says Scorpio N here, does not say the variant name anywhere at all. You get this shark fin sort of an antenna here. You get a high mounted stop lamp rear spoiler, rear wiper and all, which is very useful when you go off-road because the car gets really dirty. This attracts a lot of dust. You get rear parking sensors, surprisingly, just two parking sensors and that is not LED. The reverse light is not LED. That is the exhaust which is vibrating all the way to glory. Full-size spare wheel on all the variants, I believe, but not an alloy. So yeah, that is the slight cost cutting they've done. Suspension is quite impressive for a body on frame vehicle. And I don't like the fact that the door opens sideways. Door which opens upwards is always better and there is absolutely no boot space. You can't keep anything unless until you put the seat down, which happens in two steps. First, I pull it like this and then I have to pull it like that. Now, this seems to be fine, but the problem is now, if you apply heavy brakes, this seat will automatically fall back like this. Yeah, it happens quite a lot of times. Funnily enough, last row passengers don't get any charging ports. They also don't get any cup holders. They don't get any amenities only. No AC control, no AC. I mean... There is no vent only at the rear. So they also know that no one should be sitting in the last row. But anyways, they've given it. Thankfully, front-facing seats, not side-facing seats. So yeah, that's better in terms of safety. Slight cubby hole, like really chintu into cubby hole has been given here. The only 12-volt charging socket in this car, again, a disappointment because there is none at the front. And you can actually operate the seat from here. You can pull it and fold it. I'm just going to put this seat back. Thankfully, we have a pocket here for the warning triangle. So things are not hanging here and there. And I think this is the thing which will ensure that the seat does not flip backwards otherwise under braking it does so i always forget to put this and that's the reason i keep complaining unlike the scorpio classic wherein you can just remove the seat like this and throw it outside here you need tools otherwise you can't do it and i don't have tools all the time so that's a bit of a problem for me that how do i remove the seat because at times i just want to remove the seat and increase the boot carrying capacity proper headrest huh very nice quite impressive and let's shut this and there it shuts with a nice thud says adrenox right here fuel goes in here it is actually opening from the outside without having to open it from the inside, which is quite cool, huh? And space here is nice, but I can just tumble the seat like this, okay, to get into the last row. Last row, just like most seven-seaters, is kind of useless that I wouldn't want to go in there at all. In fact, it's best for children, for short journeys, of course, and children can also open the seat from here. I mean, there's no recline angle or anything, it's just fixed. The headrest for the center passenger is not adjustable. You obviously get twin cup holders here, Coffee brown treatment is actually very nice and there's good amount of legroom. Under thigh support is not the best. Scooped out seat bag, magazine holder, no height adjustable seat belt, says airbag here. You get a handle and a hook and all that. Dashboard actually is quite upright, but it's a very nice looking dashboard. I definitely like it. AC vents here, you get blower control right here. You get a USB-C charging socket. The only USB-C in this car is here. This is flat. Three people can sit in here comfortably which is nice. Getting in and out is not difficult because there is this side footstep. Door pockets could be bigger, obviously. And this is obviously a piano black finish, which is sort of a fingerprint magnet as well. Come on, keyless entry, de do bhai, kya kya rahe ho tum? <laughs> which actually brings me to the dynamic swipe function for the front indicators, which is also quite nice. You can see that is functional. Yeah, that air curtain is also functional here. And uh, I don't understand the whole logic of not giving an auto dimming inside rear view mirror. Still Mahindra is not doing it, which is very surprising. How expensive is it? Come on Mahindra, you can do better there. Seats are very nice and comfortable. I really like the seat. I like the color. I like the quality. There are no buttons here, which are obviously there in the higher variants. This is obviously a light leveler. You get a proper dead pedal. Door pockets are big enough here. It even tells you keep bottles and cups right there. Now, switch gear quality and all is also very nice here, which is something I really like. But you know what? They have saved cost by not giving any buttons on this key? Yeah, there are no buttons on this key. That's the reason they have put this sticker so nobody even realizes it. Otherwise, I'll show you this key, okay? There are buttons to unlock the car, lock the car, and I think this is to just spot the car or something of that sort. It makes a lot of sound every time it's telling me park lamp is on. So we're just going to shut the lamps at the moment. And another problem with the Scorpio N is 
that you have to put some effort to close the door. The doors are soft, but they do not close half the times. If you push them very softly, you have to really like use them rugged sort of. And here I turn on the car, it does this whole full swipe up. Okay, I'm just going to reset it. So maybe just going to lock the car. Car is locked and it also has this. Can you see this? Where is it? Yeah. This also has this illumination to tell you where the keyhole is. So that's actually nice tutorial for me. There is no clutch lock here. So you can simply turn on the vehicle. This is an 18 screen wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto connectivity. It is a slick system. It has got navigation. It has got applications. A lot of them like Zomato, News Today, Horoscope, Just Dial and whatnot has been given because it's got connected car as well. However, the problem is that once you connect Apple CarPlay, it does at times fumble. So it hangs. So that hanging thing is still not sorted because even with this car, I face this screen hanging and then you turn on the car, both the screens do not power on. So that small issue is still there. I hope Mahindra fixes it. I was hoping they had already fixed it with the software update, but no, not yet. Meanwhile, this thing is quite small. What is this Gola in between? No, this is, is this the cooling function? No, this is not moving at all. However, this car has a legendary feature called stick anything on the dashboard yeah just got glue so you can just stick whatever you feel like yeah i don't know why it has got glue but yeah that's not the right way to actually uh, deliver a car with some glue on the dashboard however it says scorpio in here now this whole thing is beautifully done first and foremost there's some storage space here it says keep the key right there twin cup holders Kelly of is nice to hold two usb a charging sockets what are we in 1990 or what where is the usb c and there is a storage space here. You press this button, you get catch up. Here, this is for stop start system. This is for the hazard lights, traction control, downhill assist. It has got hill descent control and all that. Dry modes, yeah, it has got three dry modes as well. Zip, zap, zoom, which is kind of weird to just call normal eco and sport. They could have just called it that way. Let's get into reverse. This is the reverse parking camera. Quality of the camera is not that impressive. However, you can change the modes here to see things from different angles if you want. That's actually quite cool. So it helps you in parking. And if you don't know how to park a car, you should not be driving a Scorpio in because this is for enthusiasts who love driving. And you can take a picture, I think. Yeah, you can take a picture as well. I thought to take a screenshot, I need to press the accelerator and brake together. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator and screenshot, baby. I thought that's how it works. Controls for volume and audio controls. This is for cruise control. And this is to browse through this particular screen. There's a lot of information here. You get fuel information, digital speed, vehicle information and all that. Now, many people might not like the 7 in screen, but I love it. This is very much Land Cruiser inspired. And this is analog. That is analog. This is my kind. I hope Mahindra never gives us a fully digital cluster because I don't like it. I like this analog part. It's amazingly well done. Yeah, the handbrake is obviously more towards the driver's side. Does it flip when it goes left hand drive? I'm not too sure. Come on, change this, change this, change this. You get a sunglass holder here and you get a mirror and light here which is nice however why does the driver not deserve to see his face or do some makeup i don't understand and let's open the sunroof which is small yeah come on for this price we need a bigger sunroof the problem is now this car is very close to the xuv 700 in terms of pricing and then you think that the 700 offers a lot more features but the scorpio n is the better car it's better to drive it's more rugged it's the real suv and all those things but you don't get a panoramic sunroof screens and all not there i completely understand I can forgive them for that. And because this car is so tall now, you have to actually hold this to get inside. But the quality is quite impressive. Like the whole fit finish of this car is actually very nice. In the higher variant, you obviously get the Sony system here. But now there's a cubby hole right there, which is quite useful. And some lights have been placed on the top. Microphone in the center. So they've done one instead of two microphones, one on either side. They just put it in the center and they're like, Chal jayega kaam. not a problem at all. Meanwhile, let's actually unlock the car. I was waiting for the car to unlock and show me a very cool thing. So here we are. And uh, no, yeah, it's not showing me. Yaar. I was expecting the car to show me this Scorpio in any ways. It says zap mode activated and showing me the checkered flag. Anyways, let's start driving right away. All right, let's turn on the car and 
there it turns on ac is on full blast we'll turn that off if you turn on the lights now this dims so there's no sensor to judge between day and night it's telling me check tire direction which is a very nice feature when you go off road anyways i'm going to change this particular thing and get into something which will tell me the power and torque yeah power and torque graphic meters which is quite cool why is it sleeping right now i don't know it activated zap mode on its own so we're going to change the drive mode we are going to come into the best mode which is zoom mode and yeah it's a bit slow to respond at times handbrake down into drive and we will turn off the traction control as well traction control off left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator you can hear the sound right now now the chime coming because of the indicators being on and hazard lights off and off we go Oh my god it is upshifting at around 3800 rpm which is quite early an upshift yeah that's not done you should redline even higher but mahindra's engines now they don't redline higher they have been tuned always to be better in the low and mid range and that's the reason they just don't have any top end grunt even the petrol now it redlines under 6000 rpm around 5500 rpm so yeah that's that so this car actually should have uh, sliding seats in the center row so at least third row can be usable but anyways let's come to the engine it's a 2.2 liter diesel engine which mahindra has really worked upon since some time now to make it amazing because this engine is quite refined it's smooth it obviously gets vocal as you push it hard which i'm doing right now get into the higher end of the rev range yeah it becomes quite vocal there but traction control is automatically turned on after 60 km per hour which is quite irritating as such and the sound of the traction control system is also a bit irritating because it makes this sound like a judder whenever esp kicks in anyways performance is actually very nice for such a heavy car this car is producing 175 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque because it's the automatic the manual is producing 370 newton meters of torque so i don't understand why the manual has lesser torque i think it is because Mahindra also knows that, that the gearbox is not as fast shifting as a manual. I mean, you can obviously shift gears faster than what this torque converter six-speed automatic gearbox can do. It's smooth, it's refined, and all that, but no, it's not fast with shifts. It, it is a bit slow, and there are no paddle shifters, which is quite disappointing because then you have to actually push it here and then make shifts, which can get a bit slow. Now we are into first gear. Listen to this, okay? Little bit of wheel spin, and it will hold on to a gear. at slightly under 5000 rpm 4800 rpm to be precise it will not make a shift unless and until you decide to do so that's good it gives you manual control of things that's much appreciated but i'll just slot this back into automatic mode itself a 0 to 100 km per hour takes 11 seconds which is fast but it is the petrol which is faster still because the 2 liter turbo petrol engine which produces 200 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque yeah that engine is quite something but it's also a gas guzzler because of the weight turbo power obviously however it also drinks turbocharged engines obviously drink a lot that will return a mileage between 4 to 6 km per liter depending on your driving style this one though will return a much better mileage because this is a diesel it will return around 10 to 12 km per liter again depending on your driving style however the four wheel drive system models they return around 8 to 9 km per liter 1 km per liter lesser because obviously the added weight really dulls the fuel efficiency of the car 57 liter fuel tank which is decent and body roll is actually well contained i mean obviously it rolls it is a top heavy car so that's something you would expect considering that this is obviously a proper suv so i don't mind the body roll at all it's the fun the body roll is actually the fun the horn could be better though however the ride quality is actually very impressive firstly it's a body on frame platform so obviously there is that lumpiness which is expected but the good bit is that in spite of that lumpiness the ride is super awesome because it feels very rugged and solid somehow this car so as you speed up the ride flattens out and it feels kind of indestructible you give it the worst of bumps or potholes it absolutely glides through them because the suspension has a sort of a softness to it or it's able to absorb everything that it doesn't thud through it just like smoothly absorbs everything and obviously it's got watts linkage it's got uh, uh, frequency selective damping which is basically altering the damping it's not an electronic system obviously it alters the damping basis your uh, driving condition so the dampers are such that when you are driving on a straight road I mean there are a lot of bumps it's able to uh, soften the dampers and when you are driving very aggressively through the corners it tightens things up uh, the overall result is that there's a good balance between ride and handling but i cannot deny that the car is always moving yeah so there is this continuously movement happening which is a body on frame trait obviously which is fine because I have to admit this car is a whole lot of fun to drive. You get a good view of what's around. You sit high up and the steering is actually very light at low speeds but weighs up decently at higher speeds. So this is not a car you would like to push hard around corners. This is not for what it has been made. It has been made to just feel like the king of the road like 
a true SUV feel here. Now, the three drive mode Zip is basically the Eco Drive mode, which actually has a big difference when compared to Zap and Zoom in terms of the performance because it does things a lot. Zap and Zoom are very much similar in terms of the output numbers, I feel, because car doesn't feel very different between both those drive modes. And performance is the best, obviously, in Zoom mode because that's like the sport mode here. And the fact is that uh, Mahindra has done a fantastic job in terms of the refinement of this car, which really blows you away because car feels really very smooth, refined, and that's one of the reasons why you would try to opt for something like this with lesser features when compared to other smaller so called SUVs around this price bracket because this is a car, trust me on this, this is a car which has the feel of an SUV now compared to the older Scorpio obviously it has dulled down it doesn't feel as rough and all but it is super smooth now what an amazing car I love the Scorpio and I feel it is an amazing car to drive it is very much fun and with all those features and all it is such a value for money package and this particular variant is amazing value for money see around the corners I can push it in fact the top speed of this car is 175 kilometers per hour they have uh, restricted the top speed abroad I think it does 160 kilometers per hour when I drove the car in uh, Namibia and South Africa that time it wouldn't go past 160 kilometers per hour but this one well it will reach 175 kilometers per hour and doesn't really struggle to reach there because this engine is big yeah it's a big engine it's powerful it gets the job done only I wish that paddle shifters were there that would have been super duper cool as well otherwise there is little to complain with the drive experience because the drive experience feels amazing in this car in fact I will choose the Scorpio N over the XUV7 below every day because I just like the feel of this SUV now obviously this one is two-wheel drive if you opt for the four-wheel drive that is also quite capable low range transfer case is there it has got brake locking differential it has got mechanical locking differential so it has the hardware it has the capability I know the ground clearance isn't much when you see it in terms of uh, the numbers because it's just 187 mm however trust me on this this car's ground clearance is more than enough you would never ever ever face an issue of touching something here or there because that is more than adequate ground clearance and uh, I love the fact that uh, controls are very easy things are a bit analog here I don't want this tech loaded stuff it's not my kind of thing so yeah the Scorpio N is very impressive and this variant at 23 lakh rupees is an absolute steal of sorts close your eyes get the Scorpio N this particular variant if you have a budget of around 23 24 lakhs because trust me on this it gives you terrific value for money I don't think uh, anything is as attractively priced right now in the SUV segment I'm talking about real SUVs and it's just Mahindra who's giving us real SUVs I see a toll I take a U-turn a legit U-turn here yeah the attraction control intervening again and again yeah so intrusive attraction control system I don't know why it keeps coming in between and now we're just going to do the brake test here okay hazard lights on yeah the <laughs> nose dive is there I didn't even apply full brake so yeah Brakes, obviously, considering the weight and the way the suspension has been done, nose dive is obviously done. A lot of sound from the brakes as well. All-wheel disc though. And the car shut itself off because stop-start system. Turn on. Good boy. Okay, traction control off. And uh, we are going to get into drive mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Hazard lights off. And launch. Here we go. Now we spin. Yeah, rear wheel drive. Okay, we wheel spin. Nimari. This is obviously a ladder frame true blue SUV with a 500 mm of water weighting capacity, which is quite good, especially if you're staying in Bombay. You know, anytime flooding can happen anywhere at all. Now, which brings me to the safety of this car. Now, this car is rated five star from Global NCAP, which is good, but A NCAP, which is Australian NCAP, has rated zero because this car does not have ADAS. And if you don't have ADAS, you really suffer in crash test ratings. So that's a bit of a problem for the Scorpio and going abroad. But obviously, Mahinda is going to give it a facelift and then. In the facelift, ADAS is going to come, auto dimming mirror will hopefully come and I think sliding rear seats will come and they will obviously give it more features and increase the price as well because that's what companies do. They always keep increasing prices of their cars all the time whenever they give it new features. So that's something which is going to happen maybe in a year or two because right now people who had booked the car originally have not got it. I mean they start to get it now only because waiting period for this car is quite a lot. Yeah, the crazy waiting period because the Scorpio N is in huge demand and naturally it will be because there's no other car at this price point which offers you this level of SUV-ness because this is a real SUV in the real sense. The other cars are just chucked up hatchbacks which obviously don't really have any off-road capability in spite of having ESP modes and all those things which is not there here because it doesn't need ESP modes. It has the capability in its chassis itself. Ladder frame for the win. The feel of a ladder frame is just so much better. Plus, it has the robustness. It has the ruggedness and it just gives you the genuine feel of what a true blue SUV should be. Which actually brings me to... 
cost difference or a price difference between various cars. First and foremost, the price of this car is 23.08 lakhs. It is 2.17 lakhs cheaper than the regular Z8 variant. The Z8 Select is cheaper, obviously, by 2.17 lakhs. Now, I'm talking about all the prices which I've talked about are going to be diesel only because. Uh, obviously that makes more sense not to compare with the diesel only since petrol is something which not many people buy and i think petrol is also not available in certain variants of the scorpio n right certain trims don't have the petrol variant obviously so 34 variants which are a lot of variants and the range actually starts at 16.34 lakhs for the z2 variant the z2 variant is obviously the base variant of the scorpio n and toyota is also being compared with the scorpio n yeah fortuner right fortuner is in a different league because it's all about reliability it's proven itself it's rugged and all that the scorpio n will still take some time to prove itself minor issues here and there are there obviously but yes it's a fantastic effort from mahindra what a beautiful car drives really well now this actually brings me to the fact that the top variant goes to almost 30 lakh rupees so yeah scorpio n costing that much is a lot but that is for the top end four wheel drive variant which has all the bells and whistles the z8l automatic with four wheel drive system that is the price so how does the price difference actually work so when you opt for um, say automatic you have to end up paying around 1.2 lakhs more i think for the automatic and uh, this car this particular z8 select costs around rupees 83000 more when compared to the z6 variant so the premium isn't much considering the features which you get and there are a lot of additional features you get here which is definitely worth paying for i feel in fact i feel it's worth paying for the 30 lakh rupee scorpio n as well with four wheel drive and the z8l with automatic and all that now we're going to launch it again hazard lights off left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go little bit of wheel spin here and there so this is the automatic you pay 1.19 lakhs less for the manual but i honestly feel manual is the better option for all the cars but for the scorpio and automatic is better because that's how it it just feels it just feels better when you drive an automatic with the scorpio and with the manual well the gearbox is okay but the clutch is not the like smoothest in terms of progression and all just get the automatic because of the congested traffic and all that i would definitely recommend getting an automatic for the scorpio and and even for the thar for that matter maybe with the 700 i would recommend a manual now this actually brings me to the price difference between various variants so when we talk about this regular z8 variant that costs 1.93 lakhs less than the z8l variant however this and the z8l have a price difference of rupees 4.1 lakhs and i'm talking about the same powertrain diesel automatic two-wheel drive otherwise when you obviously opt for uh, petrol things get cheaper if you opt for four-wheel drive things get more expensive the top end Creta actually costs around rupees 24.5 lakhs. Similar pricing for the N line as well, but I'm talking about the top end Creta diesel automatic 24.5 lakhs. So this is cheaper by almost one and a half lakh rupees. I know it does not get a panoramic groove and big screens and air purifier and all those things. But in terms of SUV ness, this is way more SUV. In fact, the Kia Seltos cost even more 24.7 lakhs because that comes in the X line variant with that paint shade. Again, similar Creta and Seltos, both of those cars are awfully similar cars. So this is so much value for money it's quite amazing which actually brings me to the real rival of this car which is none other than the tata safari the safari is not a real suv anymore not a body on frame anymore big missed opportunity from tata motors but the safari is quite expensive firstly it's only available with a diesel engine there is no petrol engine option the scorpio obviously has a petrol engine option and the top end scorpio is obviously 30 lakh rupees the top end safari is 33 lakh rupees which is crazy expensive in fact the cheapest safari automatic is 25 lakh rupees i'm talking about all the uh, prices on road mumbai only so yeah the safari is quite expensive i honestly don't know why the safari has become so expensive for the price of this car you get the safari pure plus manual yeah manual not the automatic in fact if you opt for the petrol version the petrol automatic of this car that's like 97,000 cheaper as well so yeah the safari is quite expensive expensive and the scorpio n turns out to be much more bang for the buck but then the safari is not a true blue suv because it does not have a ladder frame it does not have the option of four wheel drive so those are the certain areas where the safari actually falters in fact the base variant of the safari costs rupees 19.58 lakhs meanwhile the base variant of the scorpio n obviously costs a lot less but let's talk diesel only so the base variant of the scorpio n diesel that costs rupees 17.09 lakhs somewhere around that so yeah, the Scorpio N is extreme value for money now. Don't go for gizmos, go for the driving field, go for the real SUV character which the Scorpio N has. So now everyone is spoiled for choice, but Mahindra is doing a fantastic job because they have so many real SUVs in the market right now. Meanwhile, other competitors are like, here, front wheel drive for you. Yeah, we call them SUVs. But the most interesting part is, where will the Thar Armada slot in? Because the fighter Thar will sit 
right between the Tridor Thar and the Scorpio N. So, a lot of overlapping is going to be happening, which makes me launch this car one last time today. Hazard lights off. Let's try and do some wheel spin. Nope. If it was a manual, I could have done a crazy wheel spin for sure because obviously with manual you have complete control as well. So guys, let me know in the comment section below which car would you buy around rupees 24 lakhs? Would you buy the Seltos? Would you buy the Creta? Or would you buy the Scorpio N? Or maybe the XUV700? Or probably even the Safari or the Harrier? I'm going to be reading your comments. So comment right now. By the way, Gadi Chalane Ke Josh I forgot to tell you that you should definitely check out this awesome car perfume from Involve Your Senses. This is the Involve One Moito Lemon. Click on the top right or top left. So click on the screen. Why click on the screen? Do it. Take this amazing perfume. Le lo. Because the smell is just mind-blowingly awesome. I love it. And you will definitely love it too. Downshift car. Downshift, downshift, downshift. Yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness. Why do you shift so fast? Yeah, this is about premature gear shifts.